What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here with the legendary, the Imagineering Thad Ooh, Williams. Ooh, the ima- I almost wore my Imagineering hat Ooh, today, and I forgot. Go. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. Good week of TV, yeah. aka the week that everybody died. Everything died. <laughs> Nothing like n- there's literally no good news. Not one bit of good news. I was I was cataloging it yesterday to send to you, and it's literally sad thing, sad thing, sad thing. Okay, so. We're, our first title, uh, the first thing is is the Connors killing off Roseanne. But I, I want to flip it real quick okay. because yesterday, and I feel bad on how I answered this, and I want to call this guy out because he's a fan of the show, and I, I just feel you terrible. You want to call him out? No, I want to I want to oh, say – shout out. I want to – yeah, I want to say I'm sorry too. Okay. D. Ranthro, 1971. Uh, nice guy. He's, he's He sends me fun Instagram stuff, and he sent me this thing. It says, save Iron Fist. And I just oh, wrote no. back, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and now, and then he wrote, no problem, sorry. And now I feel terrible. Like, yeah. th- my he, inner... What a dick. What a dick. And I'm not usually a dick, but when it comes to Iron Fist... I mean, I've known you a long time. You have very little dick tendencies. Thank you. I appreciate very it. Few. Very, very few. Very few. It's not very small. Few. It's thin, that. Oh. Um, but so I feel bad. So uh, D. Ranthro, I'm not sure what your first n- real name is. You, he's a, a professional chef. Uh, really nice guy. I feel terrible about it. But in, in all honesty, in, in the world, in the history of TV talk, version 1.0 yes. and now in version 2.0, uh-huh. there are a few shows that have really grinded my gears. Right, right, right. Quite like Iron Fist and Supergirl. I, yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's and, fair. And so when somebody sends me a save Iron Fist thing, I'm like, can't we use the powers of saving things to like start a petition to get Josh McCuga on Jeopardy? I like that idea. Right? That's a much better idea. I will say... <laughs> I haven't finished season two of Iron Fist okay. yet. I watched the first couple. Mm-hmm. I liked what I saw yeah. way more than season one. Okay. I've said this a couple times. Sure. I, I liked Everybody it. has told me on Twitter, he on is, everything. He has improved. Okay. And what I think, what I was talking about it with Dorian, uh, who's finished the season. Mm-hmm. And I think what makes more sense uh, would be to see more of Colleen Wing. Yes. And the Daughters of the Dragon, which is Colleen and Misty Knight, Mm -hmm. uh, see them either on the Disney streaming service or in Defenders Part 2 or something along those lines. And Iron Fist kind of takes a back seat. Right. He goes off to Kunlun or he gets in another plane crash or (laughs) whatever, whatever might happen to poor Danny Rand. If I see a video of his parents getting sucked out of that airplane one more time, (laughs) one more. It was a good, yeah. I mean, they they did, they they cut to it a couple. Did they? I mean, of course they did. I haven't seen it in season two yet. I mean, they spent so much money on the effects of sucking them out of the plane. They're going to keep showing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, They actually, fun fact, they used that footage in the Manifest pilot. Ah! Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I thought that looked familiar. Yeah. (laughs) Good call. Good call. (laughs) They... (laughs) I don't Sorry. know. I'm just making. I'm just making fun. There's like a there's a table under this table, and I'm I keep kicking it. I don't uh-huh. know what's going on. All right. So, um, but but that being said, Netflix cancels Iron Fist. I like all your thoughts. Um, I really think that Danny Rand. I think the casting of Danny Rand was off. Right. Yeah. And I think that the, it sent me because. I think they were trying to get some of the Game of Thrones traction, maybe. Whereas well, I think yeah, Danny Rand's acting, the kid who plays Danny Rand, what's his name? Uh, Finn Jones. Finn Jones. Finn I think Jones. He's, I'm sure he's a nice guy, hell of a guy. Yeah, and I, I think, I, I think his more... acting would have been better served on a CW show. Right, right. And I think that. That's all. And I think that this character was written in such a fish out of water style. Yes. That has worked with varying degrees in the Marvel Universe. I mean, you have Thor, who's very much a fish out of water. Yeah. Uh, they've kind of repeated that storyline a couple times, I feel like, with yes. some of the other characters in the grand universe, that it starts to feel stale. Yes. And I like the concept of him being, like, completely avoid, void of all knowledge. There's a line in the, fir- in the first episode of season two where uh, – and I, I'm blanking on the pop culture reference, but it's some, some – reference to like a boy band or something in the 90s right. and he doesn't get it and Colleen's right. like I'm so glad that you don't understand what I'm saying right now right. like there's something charming uh, char- there's something charming about like it's just like he's he and he's a perennial child because he left the states and like the it's universe. like Joe Jonas in Jumanji Welcome yeah. to the Jungle when he keeps right. saying da bomb yeah. and that was you know and he, he's saying those 90s words that we all said yeah 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 
I agree. I, I it the, works for Guardians of the Galaxy. It does. I don't know if it works in the Netflix MCU because of the tone of the Netflix MCU. Okay. I'm no, I'm with you. Okay. He felt a little too like bubbly and oh my god, I can't right. believe I'm back. Like I'm gonna walk around barefoot. Right. Like <laughs> like he's the I'm gonna look like the homeless they, guy. They kept calling him the barefoot billionaire. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Speaking of Barefoot Billionaire, uh, my neighbor put a couch out on Tuesday night, and the bulk I didn't pick up is on Thursday. Ooh. And so that means it was picked up by someone on the street Wednesday morning? Incorrect. Somebody moved into the couch. Ooh. And this fun. morning, I was coming back from the gym this morning, and uh, as I got there, the bulk item guy was picking it up, and the and the guy who had been living on the couch was not happy. Not he, happy he about it. He found a home, and yeah. uh, now that home was being taken away. I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, it was it was becoming a situation outside of our building. People were getting a little upset there was somebody living on that couch. But, you know, once they start living there, can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it? Nope. Yeah. All right. Let's move uh, on. Fun fact, that guy oh. actually now has a development deal at Netflix. <laughs> Shocking. I everybody, can't get one. Everybody has one. a development deal at Netflix. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So do you want to talk about the Roseanne thing? Yeah. So so uh, so the Connors premiered. Yes. Uh, ratings wise, it was on par with the finale of Roseanne. The, okay. the premiere of Roseanne was inflated <sighs> because everyone was like, what's going to happen? So right. they all tuned in. Ratings started to dip. Right. They had already given it the second season after like the Bonanza premiere. Right. Uh, not it was not a reboot of Bonanza, by the way. It was just really it was like bonkers. If we're so, talking about reboots, situation. reboots of Bonanza. That Bonanza. that could be yeah. That's a good theme song. Do you know until um, I was like six, I thought a Bonanza was a banana split like times five. I was like, did they get it? Because Dairy Queen had a Bonanza banana split. <laughs> and it was like a mile from my house. And every time I went in there, I was like, Dad, can I get the Bonanza? And he's like, no. I want the Bonanza. You, you're not going to finish the Bonanza. It's got chocolate and nuts, both of which you're allergic to. Yeah, don't So you don't can't eat have that. it. That's not good for you, Josh. But so when my dad would be like, oh, Bonanza. Oh, there's a rerun of Bonanza. I was like, Dairy Queen has a show. <laughs> That's little Josh for you. That's a little, little Josh. Oh, I that's 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 very sweet. <laughs> yes. Um you should be the Iron Fist. Um so they call me the barefoot billionaire. So the Connors comes back. They they, you know, Roseanne's is not no longer part of the show. Right. I don't know if you heard the news. Oh, I didn't. Uh, it, was, it was some it picked up on a couple blogs. Oh. It didn't make a, it didn't make big waves. Okay. But uh so the season premiere, yeah. they had to deal with her exit. Yes. Uh she they <laughs> they first think that she has a heart attack. Ah. And then they uh, then they announced that she actually has an opiate overdose. Oh, so very timely. Very timely. Uh, what state does Roseanne take place that's in? That's a very know? good question. It's I mean, uh, remember uh, when they opened that restaurant, the lunchbox? Roseanne location. Let's find out. What does the Google say? Because. Uh, uh, Lanford, Illinois. Oh, Illinois. I was going to say, it's got to be like a Michigan, Indiana kind of situation uh, because, you know, um, Tim the Toolman Taylor, his was in Detroit, outside Detroit. Uh, Lanford, Illinois, you say, huh? Yeah, it's the fictional town of Lanford, Illinois. Okay. Uh, but uh, apparently maybe the, ho- the house that they used for the exteriors was actually in Indiana, maybe? Okay. Go but, on. yeah, so uh, so it was very timely. Okay. And uh, I think last season she had some addiction to painkillers. Okay. And so there was uh, some tension amongst the characters because people thought that some some of the characters might have helped give fuel her addiction kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, so they took a very somber note. Uh-huh. Uh, I Roseanne, I think, then tweeted, like, I'm not dead, bitch, or yeah, something along so, those yeah. lines. It's a TV show. Uh, yeah. You y- kind of ruined y- your it's, chance. It's, 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 you're done. Yeah. But uh, so that was the Connors. I didn't watch it. I, I don't watch it. I I never you, we talked about this. We never yeah. watched it as kids. Yeah. Our parents so, our parents were cut from similar cloth of like yeah. that show's not for this family. Right. Yeah. And so we did not watch that. Yeah. Uh one thing I I do I do want to later on I want to talk about your parents and uh this Jeopardy. is us. Oh, this is us. Cuz I want to uh, yeah. I'm curious if there's some some For uh, sure. It, but anyway, so so the Connors uh you know, they're I, now I, dealing with the in the wake of Roseanne, they're Roseanne-less. Okay. Uh, I know there was a whole like online movement with people saying like I'm not going to watch Roseanne without yeah. Roseanne and all this stuff they had the same numbers right. so we'll see Didn't in week really. two if it changes anything I, I don't know uh, they they have to do this they have to do the show ABC's on the hook yeah. to pay all these actors and writers and stuff we'll see if the Connors gets a second season I, I was going to say I don't think they will okay so this was this was going to be my hypothetical thought yeah is to you how many seasons does the Connors get I I, I think, think it's one it? and, I think it's one and done yeah. I think they're going to pay out everyone in their contracts 
Uh, unless there's a huge like if if they can hold on to these numbers yeah. in week five, right? Great, but I don't know if they will. I think that people tuned in because they were curious. Yes, I saw ads all over ABC programming all week mm -hmm. where they were throwing up like uh, like the little lower. It third was on like, deadline. The it was on most variety. talked about premiere, yeah. the Connors Tuesday nine p.m. Right. only on ABC. <laughs> yeah. Like they they were promoting it heavily and they were promoting the controversy. Yeah. More they were kinda, so than they were leaning into it because they knew that that's what people were, were curious about. Right. I just I don't think it's going to sustain. So I think you, you know gotta, it's it's they all have a, other it's deals. It's a losing effort. Laurie Metcalf yeah. is a, is an Oscar nominated actress. John Goodman's going to do that amazing uh, show with Danny McBride. Yes, uh, like they all have other projects they can be a part of. Mm -hmm. Uh, Galecki is finishing a Big Bang. I mean, he doesn't I, need it. it the only of, people that need it, or well, I don't even think that they care, was the the younger brother and the sister who's not even on the show. Right. So it's you know. It's, All right, we're done. It's fine. It's fine. Speaking uh, of retiring, I don't know if that's a good. Aww, is that a is that a transition? This made, that this made me a little sad. Yeah, uh, Carol Spinney, uh, who has been Big Bird and Oscar the Grouch for forty nine years. Forty nine years uh, is retiring. Yes, it's gonna it's gonna be fifty years, and then he's uh, he's out. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean he's. Cool. I think he's the last, if not one of the last people from the original, like that was a performer on the pilot of yeah. the show. Wow. Uh, I was reading all about it. They they uh, Sesame Street put together uh, like a five minute tribute video, yeah. uh, clips from John uh, Jim Henson talking about their relationship. Uh, Carol, did you ever see that documentary? The Big Bird documentary about I don't know if I saw the Big it. Bird one. It was really good. I feel like I remember when it came out. I I watched the I really got into the Elmo documentary and was, then all the news about the guy that played Elmo yeah. came out. I got to get kind of got burned by right, all that. Right. So I don't know if I actually tuned into the Big Bird one, but uh, I might now. I might I might have a, a reason to watch it. They're uh, replacing them with longtime performers. Yeah, yeah. Not so Ti or no, it's not going to be a stunt. Not going to be a stunt casting. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> Pitbull. Pitbull is Red Big Bird. I think would oh, yeah, be really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, Matt Matt Vogel, who took over as Kermit okay. uh, last year, I believe, mm -hmm. he's been performing the actual suit of Big uh, Bad, B Big Bad, uh, <laughs> of Big Bird for a while. Um, breaking Big Bird. Breaking Big Bird. Uh, I'm sure they they have done a big a Breaking have, Bad parody, and mm -hmm. it was hilarious. Yeah. Their parodies always make me laugh. Their Game of Thrones one was my favorite. Yeah, and was, their Mad Men one oh, was, was really incredible. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they they do they do great work. But yes. yeah, he's been performing the suit for quite a while because it requires a lot of physicality, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then the guy that's taking over for Oscar uh, is the same person that. I believe took over for all of Frank Oz's characters when right. Frank Oz retired. So okay. he does he does Grover and Bert and a lot of those a lot cool. of those characters. I got to tell you, I was watching so. Sesame Street uh, with my th my nieces my nieces and you nephew. were watching it by yourself. I was. Yeah. And it's okay. It's sometimes if you if you fall asleep with the one HBO on when you wake up, Sesame Street is on. If it's like you know, oh, you yeah, turn the TV on right yeah, away. Yeah, because they have the license for Sesame yeah. Street. Now. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, it's still just it may, it warms the heart. It really it does. does. It's, it's still it's still really good programming. I'm glad HBO stepped up yeah. and helped cover the cost because their funding was in jeopardy be yeah. before with PBS. Uh, so now they're they're locked in for quite some time. Yeah, HBO. And, I'm surprising Netflix didn't just step in and. And like rent out Sesame Street. Buy yeah, it, buy. yeah. Well, I think they they, they were really they, their big thing was whatever deal they made. They wanted to make sure that they could still run free programming on PBS mm -hmm. because their target audience are you know, under underserved youth. Yes, uh, the show was actually created originally. I think for that it will. I think its original like mission was to help teach English. Uh, like English as a second language huh. for uh, for Hispanic immigrants in the in in the communities that they first aired on the local stations. I didn't so know that. Uh, I, I I could have all my facts wrong on that, but I feel like I read that somewhere. Uh, so it's got to be true. But uh, yeah, so they. They they, they worked out a deal. So they worked out a deal with uh, HBO. Where like I think HBO airs it first, and then it airs on PBS like six months later. Right on. Uh, so they can still air free free programming for anyone that it's needs evergreen it or content wants it. too. Yeah, there you go. All right, uh, Orange is the New Black is going to end after season seven. Yes, I wrote Stripes of the New Solid, a spinoff idea. <laughs> I like mm -hmm. it. I like it. Uh, I stopped watching after season two. I uh, loved season six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, it's good that they're ending. 
Yes, they needed an end date. There's a there's a there's a th- big th- big event that happens at the end of season six that makes you go, well, where are they going from here? Right. And so this upcoming season that they're is filming the right now is season. the final one. They put out a video uh, with like the cast all saying goodbye, the and a lot of them. Of the... One of those. No, it was not the commer- it was not the uh, not the Animal Society commercial <laughs> oh, that makes everyone just cry. Like cutting to Piper Parabo uh, and not Piper Parabo. I uh, always confuse Piper Parabo or Parabo. And uh, what's no. the big girl's? What what's the tall, really hot? Her, the girl from that '70s show. The girl from that '70s show is uh, her character is Laura Voss, and her <laughs> actress is. Uh, Oh, she's gorgeous. Uh, what is her name? She's so it's tall. It's going to drive me nuts. But you're thinking the, the character name of the lead actress is Piper. That's what I'm thinking. And she's, Piper. she's played by Taylor Schilling. Taylor and, Schilling. And it's based on the real person, Piper Kerman, I think, uh, who uh, who wrote the book uh, that, that it's all based on. But uh, so... Yeah, so the uh, the the season's ending. They filmed the finale, or they they filmed like a goodbye video. Okay, uh, a lot of them were in costumes, so they're on the set. Actually, Laura Prepon. Laura Prepon. Uh, I would not have got. I would have. I gotten had the that. biggest crush on her my entire like uh, the entire that. She's great. Run. She's great on Orange. Um, yeah. But so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they wrap it all up. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic characters, really entertaining writing. Jenji Cohen obviously is. Also now Shepard and Glow. Yeah. Uh, not day to day, but it's a show that she kind of produced under her production Man, deal. She's good. She's um, good for four seasons of fantastic television. Yes. She really is. Yes. So I'm glad that the show's got an end date. They're bringing on Genji Cohen to uh, wrap up Walking Dead, too. I, I, I wish. I wish. All right. Animals canceled after three seasons at HBO. Did I never really, watch, No, I never really watched it. I never watched it either. I watched a couple episodes. And I thought it was pretty funny. My buddy Tanner really likes it. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, they always have it's, – it's, they're almost like anthology kind of episodes. Okay. And they're all – like they have a ton of famous voice actors in Oh, it. weird. A ton of famous actors doing certain animals I and stuff. Not, I did not know yeah. that. I should – I mean, I would like to watch a couple episodes. I uh, But – HBO, I, HBO lets things breathe, and then they're like, "All right, let's wrap it up." Maybe after a season two, like what they're doing with the Deuce, they're just saying, "Hey, it's done. That's like it. your show's over." Yeah. Uh, Netflix might lose friends next year to Warner's new streaming service. Now you only to watch it everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do Warner, you know how much they make? A Warner year Brothers of residuals. I don't, I but I'm sure it's a boatload. Give me just ballpark guess. What do you think each uh, actor? Because they all make the same. On their, on their, this microphone smells terrible. This way. one always smells bad. It's, that one smelled like donuts this, yesterday. This smells like feet. Uh, we should probably wash these once in a while. I think they, I think they make a million a year just in residuals. But a I million? Can, I have no idea. I'm just making up numbers. Twenty million. What? Yeah, dude. Per person? Per person. Each actress per person. or actor yeah. makes an extra twenty mil in residuals. I read an article like three weeks ago. Holy shnikes. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. That's a lot of friends' money. Not that's to a mention, lot of cups of coffee. I know. Not to and Courtney Cox was on this week's Shameless. Oh, was she, she really? She had a cameo in this week's Shameless. Interesting. Yeah. I, I got to catch up on this season. I know they just wrote out Ian's character. Yeah. Uh, this was his final episode. So I got to. Yeah, I got to see how that all. Fiona's really making a dive. Whew, I got to see how all this shakes out. But, but yeah. So so yeah. Warner Brothers. Produced Friends, Warner Media now has their streaming service, which we talked yes. about, that they're working on next year. So the Netflix contract is up next year. So instead of renewing, they might just move the whole show over, mm-hmm. um, which, as uh, Collider.com's article about it was reminding us, is like this is – it's re- it's stuff like this, which is why Netflix is producing so much content. Like we always ask like, why – Netflix is producing and acquiring so much stuff. It's because these deals are going to go away. Yeah. Like Disney is taking all the Marvel properties, all the Marvel movies off the table, all the Star Wars movies off the table, all the Disney content. Yes. All, like the number one, the number one kids show on Netflix for years has been a Disney Channel program. See? So it when all of those things move over to the Disney streaming service, Netflix is just going to be left with their own originals. Yeah. So they have to build up a large library. It's like planning for retirement. Quickly. Build that 401k. Yeah. 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 They know they know stuff's disappearing, so they have to they have to create their own content, yep. uh, which is why they gave Orange is the New Black seven seasons. And uh, House of Cards has been 
uh, is coming up in their final season. They've yeah. released a bunch of trailers. I think it premieres. I love Robin Wright. Uh, November second, I think, yeah. right before Election Day. Uh, I'm the trailers if, look incredible. If I'm Robin really Wright excited. Ran for president, I vote for. I don't care what her platform is. I mean, I, I mean, feel like she would probably tell you that's a bad call, <laughs> but she'd probably be the first to say like, "Don't vote for me because I'm not a pol- politician. I'm just an actress." Just today. but uh, you know <laughs> something today. <laughs> at, as you wish. Uh, there you go. See what I did? That was a, that was a, uh, well done because Princess Bride. Anyways, yep. uh, so we yeah, just saw this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else we got? Uh, CBS is selling off Television City to a real estate firm. Is it the Property Brothers? Speaking of the Property Brothers, they have a comedy coming at Fox. Yes, good, good tie-in right <laughs> Thank there. You. So this is a, th- these are two very separate stories that yes. have a nice little dovetail. Yeah, uh, CB. <laughs> Because that's a that's a woodworking term, Bing. dovetails. Because uh, uh, so, you're, yeah. you're Al Borland, I get it. Uh, yeah, uh, I used to watch uh, New Yankee Workshop all the time, dude. Saturday mornings. We, I didn't watch Saturday morning cartoons. I My watched... dad and I bonded over watching PBS woodworking shows: Home Time, New Yankee Workshop, oh, This Old him. House, This Old House. Uh, the uh, the the. Who are the jokey guys? The the the, the, the furniture uh, the, guys. Uh, I, I think, was thinking of click and clack the tap. No, 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 no. That's, we used yeah. to listen to that all the time too. But it was uh, on, on in the car. But there was a there were these two upholstery guys. It was like car talk, but they were furniture. Damn it, um, I don't remember that. Yeah, they used to upholster furniture. But and crack I used jokes. to watch that because I. I've, I've upholstered furniture in my house before. You saw those little yes, things. Yes, I've I done did. the same thing, and yeah. I, I, that's where I learned it. Yep. <laughs> um, but the. This old house, I used to like. I have my mom tape episodes of Bob Ross, right? Yeah. The Joy Painting with Bob oh, Ross. I love Bob Ross. So I would wake up early in the morning. I rarely watched. The only cartoon maybe I watched was Pee Wee's Playhouse, and that wasn't really even a cartoon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would wake up early, and this was back in the day when Sports Center was only played at like 7 a.m. and 7 30 a.m. And now it's every other hour. It's on every channel all the time. Yeah. I'd wake up and I watch Sports Center. Mm-hmm. Then I'd switch over to PBS, watch This Old House, watch uh, Yankee uh, Workshop, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, Noam, Noam yeah. Abram. Yeah, Noam. And then I'd have to go to like a 10 a.m., 11 a.m. swim practice, and yep. then I'd come home, and then you know my I, the rest of the day was taken care of. But when I was growing up, like my dad would be like, "What should we do here?" I was like, "Well, you might want to put a corner joint in there." I'm like, <laughs> I'm like nine. But it's like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, my dad was not a like a like a woodworker or no. handy guy at all. But we would we would love watching those shows. Yeah. Like, th- and then there was that one show with the guy that dressed up and like now you would call him a hipster. Yeah. But he had like he had like a hipster construction. I know who you're he, talking about. He, he had like a handlebar mustache and everything, and he never. You, he, only, he didn't use power tools. No. His gimmick was that his half hour show Planer. was all, all like original woodworking tools from yes. the 1800s. Yeah. Um, it's Dude just, was awesome. I love, I love PB. I will still watch this old house when it's, it pops up. It's a shame that, and I know he's got a show similar to that. Like Nick Offerman has a show about woodworking and it's with celebrities kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would love to see a Nick Offerman just straight up woodworking show just, on a Netflix or a PBS or something like that. No, no celebrity, no nothing. Greenlight it now, Netflix. Just, Greenlight that show right now. Because I've watched YouTube clips like long YouTube yes. clips of Nick Offerman in his workshop. Yeah. And 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 he'll be the first to say that he's like the dullard of the family. Like yes. the, like he's the least talented woodworker in the family of like all of his brothers yes. and stuff that own that shop. Right. Uh but anyways, anyway, sorry. uh slight 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 diversion, but uh the Property Brothers, <laughs> yeah. which I've watched I've logged a lot of hours with the Property Brothers. Man. No I I, I we know are a Property Brothers family. Oh man. Uh yeah. All their all their shows. There, I'm their more of a fixer show? upper. I'm more of a fixer upper. I like fixer upper. I, the I like the two Chip of them are great. Joanna. Yeah, yeah. I like I like Joanna. Chip, mm. Chip's like a kindred soul. Yes. Uh, I still think that uh, if if I was writing a fan fiction, uh, the sequel to Friday Night Lights, um, Riggins would become Chip. Oh yes. Because the end of Friday Night, it's Night Lights, in Waco, basically. it's like yeah, there it's it, he just moves to Waco, meets meets a design girl, and yeah. starts up starts up Magnolia. Oh, uh, man. But. So that's a good call. It's Property Brothers nice. are they? They wrote a book about their life as twins and stuff mm. and working together. That's being developed into a sitcom mm-hmm. uh, that I think is also is being written by twin <laughs> writers. Uh, so it's twins and twins, twins. And, and it, but it's not about Schwarzenegger and DeVito. It's not a sequel to the movie mm. Twins. Okay, that's it's a spinoff and. Uh, on that same note, their book was called It Takes Two. This is not involving the Olsen twins. Oh, man. In so, a New York minute. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Um, but 
Steve Gutenberg and uh, is not going to make an appearance. Damn it! Uh, unfortunately, and then on top of all that, separate story: CBS, uh, CBS Television City, mm-hmm. which uh, is down the street from you, yeah, uh, in the Fairfax district of Los Angeles. I r- always remember t- CBS Television City because if you ever watched old Price is Right. You had to mail in a postcard to become a contestant. Yep. And it would always be the address. And to uh, this day, if you are driving from the Grove, if you're ever here in Los Angeles, yeah. driving on Fairfax, and you're like, what are all those people lined up for? It's either The Price is Right or Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Or James Corden. James Corden, Corden also does Corden that. Corden tapes too. there. Yep. Bill Maher tapes there, which is oh, not a CBS I did not show. Know that. But uh, he, he used to tape in the Price is Right theater. No way. I went, to, I went to a taping once, and they literally just like cover. All of the prices right set with black, black curtains, yeah. uh, and bring in his set. Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. He used to tape in the Bob Barker studio, which I don't was know weird. That. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's a few other shows. They're not going to move production yet, but they've sold the. They're selling the property to a real estate firm. They've owned it for 75 years or okay. something. Um, and the real estate firm is probably going to develop a lot of the parking lots uh, into condos yeah. and mixed use and all that stuff. But they are going to keep the stage intact for a little while. Gotcha. Uh, but my guess is they probably are going to sell that off as I mean, well in like five or ten years. They're going to lease it from this real estate company for a while. Yeah. Uh, and then I assume shut the whole thing down, which is kind of sad because it's the original. Of history, but that is an expensive the, piece of real is, estate. That, that area of Los Angeles, since the Grove was built in the early 2000s, uh, that area of Los Angeles has just been exploded, a, a massive boom. And now the Fairfax district is the place for like sneaker heads. Yep. Uh, it used to be the, the a row of Jewish delis. Yeah. Uh, and Cantor's is really the only one Still left. left, but, uh, the uh, Jewish delis and the dime. <laughs> oh God. That, that oh. dive bar. Oh, oh hated my that goodness. Place. Hated that. Place. I've never been in a bar bathroom that is more disgusting than the dimes bathroom. Worse than the, worse than, uh, the mahogany room on, on Coanga. Oh, that's close. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> it's close. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, so CBS, uh, it's kind of, they're selling off a piece of their history, but yeah. it's a really good business play. And they're not leaving just yet. So Corden, if you're if you're a fan of James Corden, I'm not. Uh, if you want to come out to L.A. and watch one of his shows, you shouldn't. Uh, you can do that. <laughs> I might have to go to a Price is Right taping. Or I James went to Price is Right taping uh, when Did I first you? moved out to L.A. Okay. Uh, our buddy Brendan, yeah. uh, a few of, a few friends of ours, and we made matching shirts. Nice. As that said, were. I got neutered for Bob Barker oh, and had nice. his photo on it. Yes. It was the last season that he filmed nice. before he retired. And uh, the audience uh, the audience person saw the shirts, laughed, and then put us in the corner where you couldn't see us on camera <laughs> right. because they were not appropriate right. for 11 a.m. Correct. Uh, daytime mm-hmm. television. But he did got a, he, we got a laugh out of them. boy. They're like, you're not going on yep. stage with those yep. shirts. Uh, friends of mine have won trips and yeah. furniture yeah. like uh, lots of friends of mine went on that show and uh, like as they moved out to LA like they'd come out and be like I just graduated college yeah. cuz there's always th- the there's young a, there's always they're they're looking for like one military vet in uniform one old woman uh, an old woman a school teacher yeah. a college grad and then there's like one or two other like like right. wild cards that they throw yes. in here and there uh and so yeah I I, felt, it's a lot of fun it's it a is. fun taping it is all right uh now we're talking. This is this the, is good news. This is good. Finally, news, we have Dad. good news. Good news, son of Sipowitz. That's what I'm calling this. It's a great name for not this. bad, right? Uh, so there's an NYPD Blue. It's not a spinoff. It's a it's, sequel. It's a sequel. A sequel series it takes place in the present day. Yep. Produced in part by Stephen Boschko's son. Yeah. Stephen Boschko unfortunately died a few years ago, but talk uh, about his son Jesse. Talk about great birthing genes, right? You're just like, I got married. Oh, you know what I want to be? A TV producer. Here you go, kid. Yeah. Here's the keys to the castle. Yeah. I mean, Stephen Bochco is uh, one of the one of the kings yes. of television in the 80s and early 90s. Yep. Uh, and he knew created, how to make a procedural show, didn't oh, he? Oh, man. He was, I mean, he was gr- top of his game. Mm-hmm. And this show is going to be about the son of Sipowitz yep. investigating, unfortunately, his father's murder. Ooh, so, as part of being a N- nasty cop in the NYPD, or no, a no holds bar, not a yeah. nasty cop, yeah, yeah, yeah. a no holds bar cop that doesn't put up with shit from anybody. He doesn't take it, yeah. and they, they they did say that he 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 uh, the son who we saw on the original show Theo yeah. uh, was was his mother unfortunately died yeah. uh, not long after he was born uh, in a tragic murder in the courtroom yeah uh, when they wrote off her character uh, and then he was raised raised by Andy Sipowitz. Uh, as a single dad, mm-hmm. and then uh, 
And then Andy Sipowitz fell in love with the girl that bared her butt uh, in that one episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that episode was the little boy open. Like the reason the butt was in the show was the little boy walks in on her while she's in the shower. Yeah. And she freaks out. Uh, and, and that's son of Sipowitz. And that son has now grown up and become a hardened cop and his father gets murdered and he is on the force trying to solve the murder. I can't wait for the end of the pilot music kind of playing in and he's sitting at the bar having a whiskey and like, why'd you want to become a cop? He's like, well, when I was four years old, I walked into a shower scene and I saw <laughs> a butt. I saw that butt. And that butt made me want to be a cop. And he's like, fuck. God I remember that. <laughs> now, I wonder, because CBS got fined. That, mm-hmm. I mean, that scene became very pop- oh, yeah. famous because CBS was fined by the FCC, fought it, and won. Yeah. Uh, I wonder Win if... Win one for the butt, then. Or ABC, I'm sorry, not CBS. But I wonder if I wonder if just to, like, stick it to the FCC, <laughs> they just play that scene again in a, a flashback. A bunch of times, like, yes. like, in the pilot, like, they just... Like, little clip show, like, butt, butt, butt. <laughs> But <laughs> writer's room, they're just like, hey, how many times can we show the butt this episode? Like, I mean, at really, least three. we won the case. I mean, we won as well. Show it as much as you uh, want. <laughs> I was thinking of, cause, so my, I think it was my senior year in high school, maybe my junior year in high school, I told my mom I wanted to be Sipowitz for Halloween. What? And I wanted to like shave my head and just have like the Dennis Franz put some like, you know, pillows, get a mustache yeah. kind of a situation. And mom's like, nah, I don't think that's too good of an idea. So I'm thinking maybe this year is my Sipowitz. I mean, I go like full Sipowitz. I think you could do it. Yeah. I think you could do it. I think that's, I think that's a really good, good combo. Right. Um, I could be son of Sipowitz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of Sipowitz. Son of Sipowitz. All right. Uh, a cryptic Watchmen image dropped. No word on trailer or anything else yet. Yeah. What'd you think of it? Uh, I don't know what to make of it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a uh, it looks like yeah, some sort of police officer. He's got like a badge and a hat and a yellow mask. And then that yellow that yellow face mask kind of thing. Kind of looks like me skiing when it's real cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's black and yellow. I mean, you're rocking yeah. rocking that steeler gear. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a little of. Evo- I mean, the the face mask just immediately makes me think of Rorschach. Yeah. Rorschach. 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 Um, R- R- Rory Gil- Gilmore. Ror- <laughs> <laughs> no, is that not how you pronounce it? Um, <laughs> uh, that was a snort from Joshua Cougar. Oh, for you, you all got listening me on at home. that one. Uh, oh my so goodness. So I have no, I have no <sighs> idea what to make of this. Obviously, this is a new story. This is. Uh, I will say I am really looking forward to this show. I I love Lindelof. Yeah. And I am so excited for a proper Watchmen project. A lot of the diehard Watchmen fans who vouch for that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I don't agree with, but I'm I'm looking forward to what seeing what they do. Well, what I like about this one is that it's an original story mm-hmm. that's like a spinoff, uh, like a they're they're building from the original. So they're not trying to recreate the magic of the comic. Yeah, they're creating a new story in that universe. Right. And I assume that comic took a lot of cues from the political and social. Uh, Mo- morals of the day motifs if you will yeah uh the, the zeitgeist zeitgeist well the ze- said the zeitgeist uh so i assume that this <laughs> Rory show Rory gilmore's of the day <laughs> yep. the zeitgeist will uh i assume be updated as well okay and and kind of reflect our own times so gotcha. that we can look yeah. back at, at ourselves a little bit so as somebody who's never read any of the graphic novels right and i'm shocked <laughs> How dare you, sir? They have pictures. I read Son of Sipowitz. They have pictures. Ah, it's okay. You're right. It's okay. Um, I I I just want to know what the hubbub is, and I hope that this series brings me that hubbub because the movie didn't. That's fair. That's fair. I I, I have my issues with the film. Uh, I appreciate what they were trying to do with mm-hmm. a lot of it. I I do have a lot. The blue uh, glowing donger wasn't the best. Well, it was fine. It was, uh, but I I I I had my problems with the way that they were trying to be completist about showing every ah. every morsel of the show uh, of the book while still then leaving out a lot of stuff and changing the ending and doing all this other thing. Okay. Uh, there are, you know, there's like seven different opinions on on the matter uh, as far as whether the ending and of the movie is better or worse right. than the original or if it worked better or worse and, you know, all that stuff. But all that aside, I'm excited for a new storyline. I'm curious. I can't wait to see a trailer. The yep. cast is incredible. Yep. Uh, so you know, I'm I am I'm excited. Um, yeah. Who's the cat? We've got. Uh, oh, it's a good cast. Uh, uh, we've got Nash Bridges himself. 
Don Johnson. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, Regina King, who's incredible. We've got Tim Blake Nelson. We've got Jeremy Irons. Uh, who's Lewis, playing Alfred? Lewis Gossett Jr. My good friend Francis Fisher. Yeah, she is in it. Yep. Um, Andrew Howard from Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Uh, we've. I mean, it's just it, it. It's a expansive cast as you would imagine. Yeah. Uh, obviously, HBO is looking for another big hit ensemble drama. They need it. Yeah. Because so, yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And speaking of Jeremy Irons, who is Alfred currently? Nice transition, Thad. I'm working on it. Crushed it. He is getting replaced on television because guess what? What's There's that? another Batman free Batman m- TV show. If you liked Gotham, which was You're su- right. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> You Sorry, I, did, I had to Google it, and yeah. you're right. I, I, I speak the truth. Oh, my I, God. I speak the truth. If you loved Gotham for being a show about Batman <laughs> that doesn't have Batman in it, then you're in luck because there's a, now a new show called Pennyworth Woo! for epics Woo! that's about a young, hot Alfred. I hope that the intro is just like, Pennyworth. <laughs> very like sixties mod, like like they're doing the bat two yeah, seat kind of thing. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, I don't understand. I've got nothing on this one. Dad. This makes no friggin' sense to me at all. Uh, uh, let me. Like they were good ideas, right? Like, they've announced the cast. They've 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 been casting a bunch of the roles. Mm-hmm. They've announced uh, the guy who's playing young Alfred. The guy who's playing young Thomas Wayne. Yeah. It's all about Alfred or Alfred's time after uh, after the war. Uh, working as a, a former British SAS soldier. Oh, so it's a, it's a period piece. Yes, it takes that? place in 1960s London. Oh, so that would be perfect. Yeah, your intro is perfect. Spot on. London calling Pennyworth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, 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 yeah. I feel like I'm getting inundated with all this Gotham stuff, and it's the same retread a bunch of times. Yeah. And I like an idea of like a an SAS agent, but I hate the idea of jamming it within the Batman world so that we have like, oh, there's an Easter egg of Eric Wayne, Thomas Wayne's c- cousin, yeah. who uh, was on episode two of season one of Gotham. I don't want that. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this is a show that someone brought into the into a development office. And they're like, I've got this idea for a show. It's set in 1960s London. It's about a former British spy yeah. who teams up with a young billionaire, I'm in. and they're working together. I'm in. And then some development execs like. Could um are you familiar with the Batman comics? Could you per- what if the what if the British spy was was yeah. named Alfred? So like I've I've only ever seen Alfred as an old old uh, guy. What if, what 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 was he like as a young fellow? Was he attractive? Was he a swashbuckling spy? How all was of a like, sudden did he just get relegated to Butler, but also right. runs Batcave like Bat Butler yeah. of Batcave? And they tried to do that a little bit with Irons' character because yeah. Irons is the youngest Alfred that we've really ever seen. Because mm-hmm. uh, because most famously it was Michael Caine, uh, right. and um, but more importantly, Jeremy Irons was. Uh, Simon Gruber in yes. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Sorry, yes. it took me a while to get there. Yeah. My brain was like Hans Gruber, brother of no nope, nope. brother of brother Hans. of brother yeah. of Hans. Yep. Which again is an example of a script coming in and then a development exec saying, "Well, what if we switched it to a different IP? What if it was Die Hard? Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. I, it was supposed to be Lethal Weapon three, but whatever. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We'll make it Die Hard. There it's fine. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you know, I just I don't get it. I'm not interested in this. I'll tell you what though, you uh, wrote I don't in have here. I don't have epics. So I do. Yeah, I will never watch the show. Hot Alfred. Hot, hot Alfred. Is that's that what, a that sounds that sounds like a sex term? <laughs> hey, uh, what happened last night? Uh, she gave me this weird hot Alfred thing. Ooh, Ooh, you should that? get that. You should get that looked at. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Ooh. Is there any antibiotic for that? Uh, not yet. Yeah. So you're just gonna live with a hot Alfred? Uh, it's a situation. Yeah. It's what happens when you go, you know, and yeah. you make a Saturday yeah. night just so, all on your own. And, yeah. Sometimes you you ask for the Rory Gilmore and you get the hot Alfred. <laughs> Uh, that's a callback. If you're, uh, if you're, you're welcome. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That that was one of the world's best comeback, and that's how you transition into CBS's post Super Bowl slot. The world's Boom. best. Boom. 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 Uh, which I like how you wrote this. Sounds like the world's worst show, and I'll tell you why. Because we already have nine competition show about being the best at something. Yeah. Well, N- no. Now we're just really fishing for the bottom of the barrel. Like, are you the best at? Something, anything. Yes. Can you can you 
count the number of paper we clips. We brought in the four in best jar. paper clip counting jar people ever. Yeah, like who is the world's best? Can you juggle this plant <laughs> on your nose? Who can type the most G's while in 40 reading seconds? the Constitution backwards? Um, so here's the world's best. <laughs> Not <it> only, <laughs> all right. I hate this for a number of reasons. One, okay. the concept sounds terrible. Two, they're getting the post Super Bowl slot on CBS. Okay. So the last time CBS, CBS has been a little unconventional. Traditionally, you know, the Super Bowl What's slot. The most watched network. Yeah. So, uh, traditionally, the the uh, the post Super Bowl slot will go to like a big drama. Yeah. Uh, remember the Grey's Anatomy oh, episode yeah. with the with the bomb and Kyle Chandler. Yes. Uh, as, as the bomb last guy. Last year's uh, was this is us. Yeah. Post-Super this is us Bowl. with the with with the crock pot and yeah. the fire. Uh, there's been there's been a bunch, uh, but CBS has been a little unconventional. The last time they hosted, uh, they had uh, Stephen Colbert do a live episode. Right. But this time they're doing the series premiere of the world's best, which is a competition show hosted by James Corden because oh, they just give him everything. Yep. Uh, he, it's a Mark Burnett production. Oh, cool. obviously. Uh, it, according to the official release, the show will feature acts from every genre imaginable from every corner of the planet. Mm-hmm. Who will have to impress the judges panel, which includes RuPaul, mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore, Whoa. and Faith Hill. Huh. That's a very interesting trio. Mm-hmm. And then to make things interesting, because it's the world's best, they're going to have what they call the wall of the world, which is going to be 50 people from different fields of entertainment around the world. Who are just going to sit in a wall and basically like vote on their box? Remember that show that Bob's the game show that Bob Saget hosted for a little bit, uh, One Versus One Hundred. Yeah, and they just had like a hundred random people on yeah. a, this giant stage, and right. they all had to like vote. It was I shot a pilot for Doctor Phil that was sort of the same thing. They were like go to this wall of people and they would get their opinions on things. Totally different. But D- just... Was every person dressed like Doctor Phil? Yes, that's uh, that's a good call. Makes sense. Which is sort of dressing like Sipowitz. Call back again, Dad. So many calls again. Sorry, I yelled. Okay, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, so this just sounds like a, a hat on a hat on a hat. <laughs> so many there's, hats. There's so many things going on in this show. I just I can't. Okay. I, I can't be down with this at all. I'm not into it. I will not watch. I'm done. I, I the the game will end. <laughs> yeah. My team will not be in the game at all. Okay. Uh, your team could be in the game. Who sure. knows? Okay. Uh, but uh, the game will end, and I will drive home, and I will watch something else. Yeah. Like I loved I love the act of the. The shared experience of watching the post game show. Yeah. And this is not something that I will care to watch. No. Um, I will say this, though. Thad. It's a fumble, if you will. Oh. oh. Well done. That's a sports reference. That's huge. And I even got the sport, the right sport okay. to reference. You know what this sounds like? Do you remember? You were a 30 Rock fan, obviously. Oh, you're love a love 30 Rock. You're a genius individual. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember Kenneth's game show, Where's the Gold? Do you remember that? No. It was a deal or no deal spinoff, and they had the the hot the like the beautiful women holding the uh, briefcases, and one briefcase was filled with gold, and you could, <laughs> there was like you could tell, it, and oh, it was so is it heavy. So heavy. They, they were <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> this sounds like where's the gold? Where's the gold? I mean, it does sound like a fake idea. Oh, Speaking of Thirty man. Rock, I was reading. Uh, uh, I think it was the uh, one of the trades. That I think it was the Hollywood Reporter just did like a big thing about a bunch of showrunners. Yeah, and they asked him about all, tons of questions and stuff. And I think it was the, uh, I think it was the 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 people that run it, the the two people that run Insecure. They because uh, one of okay. the questions was uh, it, a reboot that you want to see, yeah. the next reboot you want to see. And they, they said, I know this is a joke from Thirty Rock, but Black Frazier would be <laughs> hilarious. Black Frazier, I am into it, dude. Milf Island. I I mean. <laughs> Uh, I, my, I, my, I don't know. Does your wife watch uh, Married at First Sight? Uh, we've seen it. Yeah, but we don't watch it. Uh, I, I was that wa- was the one that was after the Bachelor, right? No, this is a this is a cable one where they they take two strangers and they they when they meet for the first time it's at the altar oh, and then whoa. they have to live as a married couple for eight weeks oh. and at the end decide if they get a divorce or if they stay with the marriage. Oh, okay. uh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The first season was we've in- seen Ninety Day Fiance a couple it's times. Sim- it's the same company. Okay. I, th- it was interesting the first season because it was a social experiment, mm-hmm. and then every 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 season after that, it's people that want to be on a reality show. Gotcha. Because they know what the gimmick is. Yeah. Uh, Just like the Bachelor. I saw that they're doing a, a spinoff, okay. and they're, it's their version of Bachelor uh, Bachelor in Paradise. Uh, so all the people that didn't 
get into that didn't stay in the relationship plus people that didn't make it through the casting Jeez. are going to get thrown into an island and learn how to uh, look for love and and the weirdest part is that the whole show is hosted by one of the advisors who's mm. a priest oh huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he's like their really the, their spiritual advisor in their marriage. Nothing says and then they marriage did the promo, like and he's like, he's basically like, you're gonna bone on this island for six <laughs> weeks and figure out which one of you's the right one. So boner say, island. So says the Lord. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first moved out here, a production company, like a buddy of mine was for production company, said, "Listen, I have this idea for a reality show. VH1 is going to do it." And we're, I was thinking you'd be a perfect guest, but the only problem is you have to be naked the oh, whole time. Na- dating, was, dating naked or naked, naked and afraid? Or, no, it's dating naked. Dated naked. And I was like, I don't know. So I called my brother and he was like, I don't know, man. You might just like get a boner at awkward times. They're going to like talk about it. I would I would venture away from naked dating. I was like, yeah, all right, good call. Yeah. Thanks for uh, putting it into perspective. Yeah, yeah you would have uh, you would have been on clips for for life on the yeah. soup. And yeah, and that's exactly gifts. what I felt. Yeah. yeah, no. All right, uh, The Walking Dead. Let's do this real quick. Uh, oh, it God. the lowest ratings ever. It's I'm serious, man. I've watched the first two episodes. It's now Why? just like a romance soap opera based on like a really dramatic colonial day from your middle school. Seriously. It's, like, it's Outlander? It's it, Yeah. It's They're riding horses now because they're running out of oil, uh, but then they're making corn, methanol. I, I don't know, man. I, I Turn, know. Washington Spies? It's, 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 it's not very good. I mean... I'm serious, man. It's, it's, a, it's one of those opera. shows that should have – they should have had an end date. We were talking about this yesterday. Yes. When they – in the first season, there was a goal. Yes. And the goal was to get to the CDC yep. in Atlanta and look for a cure. Yep. And the place play, blows up and the guest star who was uh, – Noah Emmerich. Noah Emmerich, the great mm-hmm. Noah Emmerich, uh, who at the time had yet to get a series regular role right. in, uh, and now thankfully did. Yeah. But um, the uh, – he said that there was no cure and he yeah. blew the place up. And ever since then, you would have thought, I would have thought as a, a, a as a TV watcher that the writers would have said, OK, well, second season, they're going to continue looking like they're going to yes. th- they're going to say he maybe he was wrong right. and they're going to keep going. Because if, if there's a, if the CDC in Atlanta is still operational, mm-hmm. then there's got to be other metropolitan areas that are still in use. Maybe everyone's in St. Louis or right. something like go west. Instead, they just kind of gave up. They just got trapped on a farm. And then they just kept staying in the wilderness. Right. And every person they meet is worse than the last person. Right. And there is no end game in sight. No. So either they, they need – if I was going to give them one piece of advice is I, I think they need someone in the team to say, hey, remember that guy? Yeah. Maybe there really is a their cure. Goal Maybe now, he lied to us. Their goal now is building a society. So now it's just Sim City. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but that's like what the show is. All right, uh, Transparent Series Finale is going to be a two-hour musical. Uh, now I'm never going to watch it. I, I well, I, I still have to watch season four. Season four was Tambor's last season before he got fired. Okay. Uh, season three ended incredibly. I really liked the show. Okay. I was a big fan of the show. Uh, I haven't watched season four yet. I've watched the pilot I'll, three times. Okay, three times. Yeah. Each time I watch, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get past the pilot and make it to episode two, and I just can't do it. Uh, see, I watched the first time I watched the pilot was when Amazon it has was, nothing to do with trans or anything like no, that. No, no, no. I just don't like the show. When the first time I watched the pilot was when remember when Amazon was still doing their pilot season? Yeah, I like that. I was great. They would instead of instead of doing it in a vacuum, they yeah. would just release all the pilots to the public, and we'd vote. And yeah, who knows? Who knows if the vote the votes don't, don't matter. Votes really I matter. mean, it's it's like whose line rules, but right. uh, the, 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 everything's made up and the points don't matter. But the uh, the cool part was that you got to watch all of them. Yes. So even the shows that wouldn't make it to air, you would still see the pilot, mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to before, where it was like I had to like beat up a buddy of mine uh, and offer him candy and adv- it, 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 it as a uh, as a as a way to go get the failed Wonder Woman pilot that David E. Kelly did, yeah. uh, which is god awful, um, that never made it to air. Yeah. So I love watching pilots. I was really excited about this, mm-hmm. and so I watched the transparent pilot without knowing the gimmick. So uh-huh. I didn't know the conceit of the show. Yeah. I didn't know. It's like a family game moment. Ah, 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 yeah, and yeah, and then they cut to the title card at the end, and mm-hmm. you're like, transparent, transparent. Oh my gosh, it's a play on words. I yes. get it now. And uh, and I I loved it. I fell in love with it. And then the show finally premiered. I convinced my wife to watch it. I rewatched the pilot with her, 
And by then, but by then they were already doing the marketing. So you knew, right. you knew what the show was about and you knew what, who Jeffrey Tambor was playing and you mm-hmm. knew where the show was going. It lost a little bit of its, of its wow factor. Sure. Uh, because the whole pilot was about kind of surprising you with it. Yes. Uh, the show has taken a lot of different turns. Uh, now, m- basically everyone on the show is now uh, finding themselves, re uh, redefining their sexuality, r- f- figuring out what it is that they, where they fit in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of been done in tandem with Jill Soloway, cr- the creator of the show, uh, finding their sexuality and mm-hmm. changing the way they look at the world. So it's kind of been this interesting thing to watch. And then after all that, you had the Jeffrey Tambor stuff, which kind mm-hmm. of put everything uh, uh, like a wrench in the whole system. They fired him. I assume they're going to kill him off at the beginning of season five uh, or her off her uh, kill Mora off. Um, but <laughs> They, they won't kill Jeffrey Tambor, I don't think. But they, <laughs> I, think they, I, they I think they will kill Mora off at the beginning of the season. And then apparently they're going to end the show with a two-hour – this is a half-hour show, mind you okay. – a two-hour musical episode, okay. which seems like an odd choice to me. But the last episode I watched uh, featured a musical number by Judith Light, which brought the house down. Okay. Um, uh, Ju- Judith Light's incredible on she, that show. Uh, yeah, she, well, she's always incredible. And, yeah, it's and, fucking and she, uh, Yeah, and she was so good on uh, Crime Story, okay. on Versace. Okay. Uh, but, I, I mean, I don't know where the show is going. I, I need to watch, I need to catch up to figure out what the plot of it all is, but... Okay. I will pro- I I will more than likely binge both of them together. Like yeah. when season five comes out, I'll probably start on four and then work my way through the whole series. Uh, so I'll get back to you at some point. Okay. Uh, I just I don't know what to make of the news that a two hour musical is how they're going to end this show. It seems out of left field, but they've they've changed and reshaped the concept of the show the whole the just, whole series. Like like this and what was that show with the the Duplass brothers on HBO it was like splitting up together uh, or something like that was togetherness. 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 Uh I I hate LA shows that everybody's complaining. Yeah. And that felt really complainy to me. No, 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 no. That it, it felt like that a lot to me too. Um it in its best in its best moments. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of the dysfunctional family dynamic from uh, Six Feet Under. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. It, when it works, because that that it's, version of the dysfunctional family where everyone's complaining and mm-hmm. hating their lives and going through quarter life and midlife crises, um, and they all happen to be rich people, white people in Los Angeles, uh, can get very stale. Yeah, because it's a, and it, and I don't mean you know white people are dumb or any. I mean that we are, but. It has nothing to do with race. It just has to do with it. You're you're seeing the same, the same story over and over and over again. Yes. And this family at the beginning, before they all started to make their own transitions and their own changes, was basically the same family all over again. It was right. another privileged, upper middle class family uh, going through these crisis crises, and then each of them started on a different journey. And that's when the show got really interesting to okay. me. Uh, because it wasn't just, oh, I'm a record exec that hates my job. Right. It, it's, I'm a record exec that but falls in love with a trans woman that then re- but it's like, changes it's like the my Judd entire... Apatow kind of thing where everybody's kind of complaining a lot in his later movies. Yeah. Like, the, uh, this is 40. It's a complaining right. thing. I'm off it. Ariana Grande, Pete Davidson, they're done. Uh, sad. I'm it, sorry. The world is over. Uh, <laughs> no more, no more Ariana and Pete. Uh, I my only my only wonder about it in terms of television is what it does to his presence on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, they were really getting that Ariana mean, Grande stuff. They were really hoping to get. Well, a, she was supposed to be the musical guest in the he, season season premiere, and yeah. now they missed out on that. So, Yikes! Uh, All right, let's yeah. do some rapid fire reviews because let's talk about like a, some TV that we've watched. Yes, uh, this is us this week. I thought was absolutely fantastic. I like I really enjoy some of their standalone episodes when they do them. Yeah. Uh, and this was all Vietnam standalone. I loved it. I watched it with my mom and she had a lot of very interesting things to say. And my dad talked about um, getting his number called, but he was in college yep. uh, during the draft thing and how it was one of the craziest nights in the in his life. I believe it. Um, where they were, what they were doing. Was he part of the, that, the, the December 1st, 69 draft, uh-huh. the first one? Uh-huh. 
Yeah. 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 And my dad was my my dad missed that by a couple of years. Yeah. So. And uh, how you know certain friends of his they were all together and their numbers got called and they went off and yeah man I t- I, t- I mean that's something that was a powerful episode to watch really enjoyed it yeah yeah I I think what made that episode work so well is that it opened with a Vietnam story that felt familiar mm-hmm. like the 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 action sequences and the the dynamic amongst the troops right. felt familiar. If you've watched any movies about Vietnam Forrest Gump kind of, a yeah, situation. Yeah, 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 which is good. It, it, yeah. it, it helped like get our foot in the door. Yeah. And then through the framing device of the episode really changed all perspectives, changed our perspectives on Jack's father, yeah. on his relationship with his brother and his mom. And, uh, we, we, the, the face thing that he does. Oh, I know. The calming, the yeah, calming breathe. move that he yeah. does, the breathe. Uh, we, we we see kind of the origin of that. We see all these pieces that help fill in the gaps in our history of Jack. Yeah. And as one one reviewer uh, put, like, it helped make it cut away at this whole thing that he's this infallible superhero character. Mm, right. Like, people look up to him in that way, but then there's this recurring theme of him actually being uh, scared out of his mind and worried for his life and and just being a regular person that is forced because of the situation to kind of stand up and be the bigger person mm-hmm. and be the the rock as it were uh so i really like the way they did that i am looking forward to the rest of the vietnam arc i know that justin hartley and uh the woman that plays his girlfriend yeah i don't know also the actress's name. blanking on her name too but they uh they also went to Vietnam with the, at the same time. Like they all, the production all went at yeah. once. So I, so we do get to see him in that that we saw in the in the flash forwards. We do get to see them land in Vietnam and and search for answers. Yeah. So I assume if not next week, then in the next in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna get more of that, and and they will make their way there to learn uh, more about Jack's life. And I really, yeah, I really like the way they did it all. I've never seen the draft lottery depicted on TV. Me neither. And I that love. Awesome. I, I mean, it. It. Her name is Melanie LeBird. Man, LeBird? she is something. Uh, LeBird is the word. Yeah, she was on Gypsy. You've never heard of it? Dark Matter. I've heard of Dark Matter. The Grinder, the Rob Lowe show. Oh yeah. Oh, she was on Strike Back. Okay. Is she that where really you recognize looked, her? Yeah, she looked familiar from that. All right. She was on a CSI. Um. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I love that episode. I thought I, it was really well done. They did a great job. Uh, what did you? You're think not of? kind of shameless this week. No, what did you think? It's the Ian send off. Did you like? Well it? done. Uh, the the we're seeing Fiona go off the deep end, kind of a situation. Yeah, uh, which I think is getting her off the show. Right. Uh, which I'm I'm enjoying. Yeah, I'm enjoying what's gives happening it, here. Gives them some stakes. Yes. Is Frank still doing ridiculous stuff that you yes. can't understand? And Correct. Makes no sense. Yeah, All exactly. Right. Uh, I watched the first Romanovs. Oh, you did. I did. What did you think of it? It was okay. Yeah, it wasn't amazing. Uh, it's like an hour and a half. It's isn't an, it? Yeah, they're all like mini movies. Okay, okay. So it's like it's 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 a it's like Black Mirror anthology style. It's anthology I mean, style. I wouldn't say Black Mirror. Well, but I yeah, know, you, but, but it, yes, yes. Standalone, uh, a standalone film. It's very with standalone characters. Pretentious. I've read that, and I've read that it's it's actually it's hard to like. I've heard that it's actually a critique on on like th- that those uh upper middle class people and yeah. like they're gr- what they're doing in society right now they're they're grasping at the last vestiges of power right and they're convinced that they are like the chosen ones right in the, in, in the world yeah uh, and that the whole thing is kind of like a critique of that yeah which i think is interesting i haven't watched it yet i can um, see that yeah. so uh, which who was who who were the stars of the first one that you saw um it's the son of a because now I'm on to the second one. <laughs> I like watched it so late at night. Ah, Hold on. You forget. Uh, the fir- so I think the... <sighs> I finally started catching up on Black Mirror. I'm way behind on it. Uh, but I finally watched uh, Hang the DJ and uh, Callister. Yeah. This is Callister. It's the Corey Stoll, uh, Carrie Bichet one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. It's... I mean, I love the two of them. Yeah. Um, it's And Noah Wiley's in the first one, too. Oh, interesting. Um, it, you know, it's, it's about... A marriage failing, yada yada yada, kind of a thing. But again, Corey Stoll is sometimes very easy to like and sometimes very hard to like. And in this one, he's just kind of like, eh. but Carrie Bichet, obviously, she's the best. He so. played he played a uh, an Anderson Cooper 
type character on Girls. Yeah. It was incredible. He was really? so good. Yeah. He, okay. it, was, it was a love interest for uh, for one of the characters. Okay. Um, and just like the perfect amount of, of smarm. Uh-huh. Uh huh. To make it like you he, like he the character, you smarm. like you like the character, but then you don't like the character. I mean, yeah. his arc on season one of House of Cards was incredible. Right. Um, oh, he's the best. He's so good in that show. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. What'd you think of the finale of BoJack? Man, that is that series is is one dark animated series. It is so <laughs> funny, but man, it got dark at the end of this one. Uh, it's it's real stuff. Real stuff. Yeah. I, I highly recommend that show to anybody that doesn't watch. I know I'm a ve- very big fan of adult animation, and all those people are like, "Anime is adult." It, okay, <laughs> don't uh, don't 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 open that can of yeah. worms again, Josh. Uh, but I really enjoyed BoJack. I'm, I'm on it. Okay, uh, have you are you caught up on Mayans? I am. Man, this show was really good. I'm really liking it, and yeah. I'm re- We we've been interacting with some people on Twitter who keep asking, like, "Do I need to watch Sons?" To no, g-? you don't. But it if helps. you have, they've been bringing back. Storylines and characters yeah. that I, I like fr- how we found out that they won Chucky in a card game. That was a great line. That was really cool. That was a great line because yeah. I love that Chucky's back yeah. uh, and with all of his weird finger, uh, the his weird mechanical hands, fingers, mechanical, mechanical high hands. Yeah. Uh, but they're they're bringing back some storylines that didn't really get resolved properly in Sons of Anarchy. Mm-hmm. And I'm lo- like every time a character that I recognize, like the character that pops up at the end of. The previous episode, and then is a big force in this episode. Yeah, uh, I literally was like on the edge of my seat, saying, "Oh my god, oh my god, he's back!" I can't believe. Like, I immediately started to make all the connections, and yeah. then I pulled up the Wikipedia page and to like refresh myself of where we last saw him in Sons yeah. and how that arc did and didn't get resolved. And it all made. It's like it's as if. They've been planning it all along, and I know they haven't, right. but they're making it – they're giving so much more weight to the goings-on in Mayans. Mm-hmm. And I'm liking the characters. They're starting to create their own personalities. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple characters that I just saw as, like, analogs for Sun's characters in right. the pilot. Coco being like just like oh you're Tig yeah you're Tig okay yeah, yeah. I get it but like you're the you're you're the crazy wild card that right. like everyone's like what's up with this guy uh, so they're starting to create their own personalities yeah. and become their own people uh, I'm liking Coco's arc a lot me too it's going in some interesting interesting directions that I wasn't expecting I'm hoping to see uh, more of the Mayans get fleshed out mm-hmm. uh, but yeah I'm really liking it Edward James almost. Fantastic, right? Fantastic. I yeah. love. I mean, I've always, always loved his characters, uh, and I'm, I'm really liking what they're giving him to do. Yeah. Uh, finally, always sunny got a clip show. Yes, it did. I watched both. I watched the previous one because I hadn't seen it when we recorded last week. Right. Uh, which I watched them both back to back. Genius, right? Genius. Yeah. Genius. You're absolutely right. That is an all time favorite episode. Uh-huh. But this one was really interesting because clip show could be terrible. Right. And they know that going into it. Yep. And what they managed to do for the little interstitials between the clips. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. genius. Yeah. Like my buddy directed the episode. It's great. Great. Yeah. A a fantastic uh uh plot device. So good. With a great cameo of a very famous locale. Uh-huh. And um I just I I love the costumes that they put so together good. for that. Yeah. And then just the layers that they gave Basically, if you've if you've watched any Always Sunny, you'll appreciate this episode, even mm-hmm. if you aren't caught up because they're because it's a clip show. But uh, they do a great job of weaving in some stuff from the Christmas movie uh-huh. that most people didn't see. I know. I own it on Blu-ray. Do you really? <laughs> but that's great. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the Christmas special was hilarious, yeah. and I love that they didn't end up bleeping that scene Nothing. with Charlie. I was expecting them to yeah. bleep a little bit of it, uh-huh. and he just drops like twenty f bombs in a row, and they're like, yeah, "It's fine." But the, then they bleeped the one. They bleeped the R word, yeah. which I thought was very a very telling yeah. thing. They're like, "We're not letting no." We're yeah. not doing that. Yeah. But we're letting in all the F bombs. Man, there it's just uh I, I'm I'm enjoying okay. the hell out of the season thirteen. Me too. Me like too. they they're they're still they're still making me laugh, which is hard to do this long into the tooth. One hundred percent. Uh did you hear about this speaking of hard to make you laugh, did you hear about the Simpsons? No. Uh so the Treehouse of Horror is coming up right. this year. Next year is the thirtieth Treehouse of Horror. Okay. 
and it's going to end up being episode 666 of the series. Get the hell out of here. Like, and, and in the press release, they're like, uh, Al Jean said, as we planned in 1989. <laughs> <laughs> Which God, it's good. I, I'm always I'm always amused when everyone jokes about the Simpsons predicting the future so and good. finding random jokes from '92 that yeah. have now become true. But uh, you know, that's a show that's still I feel like is wildly uneven. But I will still tune in here and there for um, um, some some gold, especially like a special like a Treehouse of Horror kind of thing. It's been a while, but uh, they'll still make me laugh. On oh, rare yeah. occasion. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You got any uh, Twitter uh, questions Yeah, let's real do quick? some tweets. What do you say? Hashtag Clutter TV Talks. Guys, subscribe to the channel here. Uh, watch the videos. Share it. Give us five stars. Rate it on iTunes. All that kind of stuff helps the show. Uh, first Twitter question comes from at Snoop Minnis. His, his name is just Ricky, but it's at what? Snoop Minnis. What up, Snoop Ricky? <laughs> With uh, Big Mouth Season 2 introducing the Shame Wizard. And it was voiced not by Gary Oldman. It's voiced by <laughs> David Thewlis. Yeah, I saw people you correcting you about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if that had been Gary Oldman, I mean, geez. Yeah. But David Thewlis is yeah. pretty hilarious. What is a moment from your early teen years that left you feeling shame? Uh, there were a lot of them. That would be all of my early teen early years. Early teen years. Uh, if I could, like, maybe put it into TV terms, it was probably the fact that I used to come home and watch The Grind a lot. The on M- grind on 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 uh, MTV. It was just a dance show Ooh. with like really hot girls and and dancing. I just remember hosted by every, Eric Nice. Right when I got off the bus, if I timed it right, I could get home in time to turn on TRL, mm-hmm. and and then I was definitely dancing around the room to like Papa Roach. Oh and yeah, and like all of those like like grungy. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was it, it was it was not good. Uh, there was lots of there was lots of like uh, heavy grunge in, okay. in my in my life in a lot the late nineties. Dad and his teen angst. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a similar note, this one comes from at G Wilson thirteen twenty two scary Gary with Big Mouth season two out. What grade <laughs> would you give your hormone monster from your youth? So in Big Mouth, you've yeah. never seen an episode. I still haven't watched it. So okay, film, film the, me a up. hormone monster is like your inner guy going like touch your boobs. Oh no! Or like a, the girl, the girl one's hysterical. It's played by Maya Rudolph. Oh, that's it's the funny. Girl's from, and she's like. Be angry, be hater, <laughs> hater. Like it's really <laughs> funny, man. Um, I gotta watch this show. Who? So who would? What would you give your hormone monster from your youth? Oh, a solid ten. Um, oh, is it one out of ten? Uh, uh, yeah, it's oh. I mean, it's my grade. Oh yeah, he was an angry hormone monster yeah. that just was terrible. Sixth, gr- sixth grade, I via via past notes, I think I asked out fifteen girls okay. in the first half of sixth grade and got fifteen <laughs> no's. Like like I you would you be my girlfriend? Yes no. or no? That's a that's a big no. Hard no. For it's a hard poor no. Thaddeus. No wonder you're such a grungy. Youth. Yeah uh-huh. yeah. Well I I didn't get the memo at, between fifth and sixth grade that it like wasn't cool to like dress up for school anymore. Uh, okay. Like 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 dress in khakis yeah. and like button down shirts. <laughs> no one told me. No uh. one told me. And it was it was a rough couple of months. Um so uh any thoughts? This one comes from at Dwayne Any Fernand- thoughts? Just a, Sorry, just no, in general? My bad. <laughs> Dwayne Fernande eight. Uh, Dwayne, he says, any thoughts on the final season, season ten of Modern Family so far? It's not the final season. I don't believe so. Uh, they are planning on killing someone off, but I, I don't plan- believe I, I don't think this is the last season. I don't. I don't think so either. But regardless, what are your thoughts of the season? Uh, it's hysterical. Last night's episode was amazing. There was this. It was one whole storyline was about how Manny has a real girlfriend, and they're both training to be improv actors, like improv people. And the girl is just so LA improv, dude. She's it's just Wait, Manny's doing improv classes yes, with this girl. Yeah. He's in college now, yes, right? Yes, exactly. His character's in college. Yep. Uh, next one comes from Chad at Chad MW10. Have you watched Maniac on Netflix? And if so, what is your opinion? Okay, I've tried. I can't do it. I just we both it's not we for both me. watched the first episode, yeah, and just... it's such a mind f, yeah. if you will, yeah. uh, that it like there's a couple people in the office uh, that we're going to get Cobster and Frank to do a review. Yeah, that's because your promise. They, just Dad and I aren't going to do it. I I don't know when when I will finish it because yeah. it. I need to be in a very different headspace to finish it. And I'm sure I, I would probably like it if I got all the way through. I just, it's one of those things where it, it's nine 30, 10 o'clock at night. We're mm-hmm. watching the episode and I'm like, I'm, I'm having like weird flashbacks. Yeah. And I need to, I need to 
unwind with something else. So no, and Maniac's not the show. Maniac is not that show. No. Uh, okay, this uh, this one comes from Mr. Meeseeks eighty six. That's a um, Rick and Morty reference. Are you a Rick and Morty fan? I need I I yes, it's, but it's I need hysterical. I need I need to complete the whole series. I've I've watched a smattering of episodes okay. because I didn't have Hulu at the time. Gotcha. Uh, but I need to I need to catch up. I'm guessing uh, he is from either Canada or across the pond because he spells favorite F A V O U R I T E favorite showrunner. Personally, I'm a big Kurt Sutter and Bill Lawrence fan. Uh, David Chase, I mean, uh, yeah. Simon? David Simon? David Simon? David Simon's a pretty solid showrunner. Uh, yeah. Gilligan and Gould yeah. uh, from Breaking Bad. Yes, and, yes. And, uh, big, I'm big, Better Call Saul. Big, big fans of them. Um, big fans of... I like Genji Cohen. Yeah, I like Genji Cohen and the and uh, the the two writers, I'm blanking on their names, the two women that created the show Glow that I think are running the room itself. Uh, Liz and S- Hold on. Liz something or other, um, but uh, big uh, Carly mentioned Liz Flahive, Flave, okay. uh, Flave, Fla- uh, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, Flahive and Carly Mench. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, uh, they I, I I think Glow is incredible. Um, there's I mean, the showrunner is a very interesting position. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of I mean, most of them are writer, writer producers. Like mm-hmm. they're, and then there's some non-writing producers that that work as showrunners as well. Um, but they are they are the people that create the show. Like it's not a director's no. medium. Yeah. Uh, the director comes in as a hired gun for the week. One hundred percent. And and does what the showrunner wants them to do. Yeah. And the showrunner is the one that's really dictating what's going on. And I think that. Most rooms, hopefully, right now are like good, positive rooms yeah. created by strong showrunners. Uh, and then there are some that are still a little toxic, but regardless, a lot of them have a singular vision. And like you're, uh, like in, on Mad Men and Breaking Bad and House of Cards and Orange is the New Black and, mm-hmm. and all these kind of, and, and the, going back to the Sopranos and yeah. uh, Chris Carter with the X-Files, they all have like, uh, or Aaron Sorkin with the West Wing and, and the newsroom, they have very specific visions that they are dictating out to their team of writers uh, and then their directors every week. Uh, Carlton Cuse is also a good Oh, he is good too. Yeah. I'm liking uh, yeah. Lindelof. Uh, yeah, Lindelof too. Yeah. All right, this one comes from At Leo Silver. At Silver Leo. Hi, Silver. Uh, who would you put on the Mount Rushmore of female TV villains? Female um, TV villains. Female TV villains. Ooh. Man, that's tough. Um, I feel like I need a second just to. Skyler like... in Breaking Bad. I know. <laughs> I just, I just could not. By the end of that show, I just could not stand her. Um. Yeah. Female. Um, female TV villains. I mean, I'm trying to. Is there? I'm trying to. I mean, this, this rack is saying a lot about brain. about television and female villains, right? Uh, which is a shame because I think there's a lot of females out there that could really be awesome villains. Yeah. Um, why? Do, why am I always putting like the wives of the main guys as the villains? Um, yeah. No. What? I mean, what about uh, like uh, some of the the Game Suella. of Thrones? Some oh. of the Game of Thrones cast. Yeah. I mean, I guess Cersei Lannister is yeah. is a fantastic villain. Um. Uh, one of one of one of my favorites was uh, Nina Myers on Twenty Four. Oh yeah, she was good. She was yeah, like because uh, if it it's a huge spoiler for season one of Twenty Four. Mm-hmm. If you've never watched it, the show was in fifteen years old, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But uh, you, you she she does a great job in that whole season where you think it's going one way and then it changes and then yeah. sh- her reappearances throughout the series uh, just drive home the evilness. I mean, there, there are also great side villains on that show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mandy being, uh, being, um, was that her name? I'm blanking. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the crazy, the crazy Mandy and that, that blows up the plane and the pilot. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, there's, uh, something about that character that really, you could tell she, she knew exactly what to do to screw up Jack Bauer. Yeah. Um, man, I, like I'm, I'm having trouble. I am, I am having a hard time 
I mean, I guess I could pull my brain. some of the like the villains on CW shows, but I don't really care. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, if you could poop on any toilet in any show, which show would it be? That comes from at CPMH3. Um, I would poop on the USS Enterprise because I want to know where the friggin' toilets are. <laughs> We'd never see... They, we've seen bathrooms, and we never see the friggin' toilets. Yeah, it's true. Like, there's no... Space toilets. There's no space toilets. And the same thing with 24. There was always That, that was always the joke with 24. It takes place in real time, and they never went to the bathroom. Never, not And once. then they finally went to the bathroom, and it was to kill somebody. Right. Like, <laughs> like Jack Bauer needs to urinate once in a while. There's an episode of Seinfeld... Where George goes to a bathroom in a building, or Kramer goes to a bathroom in a building that George has recommended. Yeah. Because George knows the best bathrooms in the city. And Kramer's in it goes like, Woo! Like, I want to go. I want that bathroom. Yeah. What about what about the ba- the bathroom in Jerry's apartment? Like That would be awesome. Like that's a that's an iconic bathroom. Yeah, it really um, is, because you just see the bike and then yeah. like the door open, but you yeah. never see the full bathroom. Or like uh, the or the bath the upstairs bathroom in All in the Family that you we never saw, but we'd hear the toilet flush. All the time. Yes. Like, that was, like, the first toilet flush on TV, I think. Yeah. Because they would just, you, like, in the middle of some, something going on downstairs, you just hear this massive flush yeah. that just shakes the whole house sort of thing. All right. Final question of the day. This one comes from at Shannon Blake 94 Why does the show, why does a show like Suits not get talked about more? I don't know. I love Suits. Yeah. Dad loves Suits. Uh, Go I Go still, Talk about all it, right, Dad. All right. So. That's TV talk. Here on a Thursday, uh, I'm Josh McC- <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I, 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 to be fair, I'm woefully behind on Suits. I still haven't watched the final season. I'm gonna bring my mom in here to talk. about I still about haven't suits. watched the final season. I haven't seen the send off for Meghan Markle, who's pregnant now. Yeah, Mazel, Mazel, Mazel. Uh, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen the send off for the final year, and I th- now uh, uh, Catherine Heigl is on the show. Oh uh, well, now and I'm it, definitely now it's watching. just like a straight up legal drama like there's like the the gimmick from the pilot where he's like a lawyer that's not a lawyer yeah. uh is all gone because they're not on the show anymore right. now it's just a legal drama it's just about suits which is fine i mean if it's like boston like bo- it's like kind of like boston legal light i remember boston, boston, boston legal was incredible that was i the, love that show wasn't that, james t kirk in that uh show? yeah denny crane yeah. denny crane and yeah. uh and and that was a that was a fantastic show but all whatever. Right. whatever sorry suits it's okay. guys it's okay. watch suits Wear suits, watch suits. I want to. I want to do a show called Suits, but it's about like a suit maker. Yeah, you know, he's like a really good. He's a good suit maker. Yeah, and but also he's putting drugs in the suit. I was gonna say like runner. yeah, yeah, the tailor, <sighs> like the tailor in uh, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Another Star Trek reference there for hey. you. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga. That's Thad Williams at Thad Williams. We're Collider TV Talk. We're here every single Friday for you, Collider Podcast Channel. Collider TV Talk has its own podcast feed on iTunes. Everywhere you watch, listen to podcasts, subscribe, rate, like. Uh, Collider Sports Time, I'm on there. Collider TV or Collider Movie Talk is every single day, Monday through Thursday, not Friday. We have all kinds of great program- programming here on the Collider channel, so check it all out. Hashtag Collider TV Talk. We'll see you guys next week. As always, put down the book. Pick up the remote.